Let's talk about the stars. Stellar parallax does not exist. Go research negative parallax. Parallax in astronomy refers specifically to the apparent shift in the position of a star due to Earth's orbit around the sun. So what you really just said was stellar parallax doesn't exist. Go and research cheese and onion crisps. Hornsworm hat. Creaky blinder. In this video, I'm going to talk about how outer space fantasy land is fake. Doesn't make sense. Just because you don't understand something, Hans, that does not make it fake. Even if you believe the things that they tell you about where we live. But belief has got nothing to do with it, Hans. We're not talking about God or the Bible here. We've learned a ton about space through a mix of cool tech and brilliant minds. Telescopes, both on Earth and in space. Let us peek at distant galaxies and stars. Space probes. Carmen, there's an 80 foot satellite dish sticking out of your ass. Sure, you guys. Whatever. And satellites send back amazing information from far off places. Plus, scientists use maths and physics to figure out things we can't see directly. It's like piecing together a giant kiz. What? It's like piecing together a giant cosmic puddle. Puddle? A puzzle. <laughs> subscribe observable reality doesn't match what they say yeah but that might be because you seem to spend 99 percent of your time with your head wedged firmly up your own ass and it's a big lie to keep people away from god and just to keep people dumbed down but why do they need to pretend there's a place called space in order to keep people from believing in god that makes absolutely no sense at all hands and we can see that it's dumbed down we've only got a year you speak to realize that you live under the Great Deception that's talked about in the Bible. The Great Deception in the Bible is often linked to end of times prophecies, especially in the New Testament. It's described as a period where there's a lot of misleading information and false prophets, making it tough for people to know what's actually true. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense now that I think about it, and it perfectly explains people like hands. Tell a lie big enough, and people will believe it. Keep telling people lies over and over and over again, and eventually it sticks. Seems a little off topic to me, Hans, but yeah, we all know that that's how the Bible has duped so many people into believing what's written in it, but I thought we were talking about space being fake, not the Bible. They love to talk about the present as if it's in the far future. You know, think of books like 1984. We already lived there. We already. The reason that that book exists is because it was somebody who was awake to some of these Masonic, Freemasonic shenanigans, and they knew about all the mind control and thought crimes, and so they wrote a book about it. But Hans, 1984 is a work of fiction. It's a dystopian novel, which means it's set in a fictional, oppressive, and nightmarish society. It's all made up, pal, much like the things you talk about, so no wonder you like it. That's not a book of prophecy. It's a book of reality. What they do is they take reality and they sell it to sell it to you as fantasy or as being in the future. And then what they present to you as reality is complete fabrication, outer space land. So to make sure we're all following along with your logic, huh? <laughs> works of fiction are reality, and reality is fiction. Fiction. Okay. Nobody can go touch outer space or fly to Venus or those are all just in people's imaginations. So these people then, Chris Sembrowski, Sean Proctor, Jared Isaacman and Haley Arsenault, who were the first all civilian crew that were launched to orbit the Earth are all in on this lie? And every single astronaut on board the ISS is also in on it? Spacecraft have already landed on Venus though, Hans. The Soviet Union's Venera program was particularly successful. The first landing by Venera 7 was in 1970, which was also the first to transmit data from another planet's surface back to the Earth. Several more Venera missions followed, with Venera 13 in 1982 sending back the first colored images from Venus's surface. Did you know that somebody had sex on top of moon rocks? You're not exactly Mr. Current Affairs, are you, Hans? Thad Roberts, this guy here, stole 101 grams of lunar rocks from a NASA facility while he was an intern at that facility. And that was in 2002 and it was so that he could have sex on the moon. Oh, look at this, this Hubble Space Telescope image, just day in, day out. 
So you're doing it again. What about the James Webb Space Telescope, which is a game changer in astronomy? It's the most powerful space telescope ever built. And it's the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, it was launched in December 2021, and the JWST is designed to look further into the universe and back in time than ever before. Now, is there a reason you're only referencing out-of-date things, Hans? Things that nobody can really experience, it's just being shoved on us by authority figures, by the controllers. Really? Well, that's really weird, Hans. Now, there's been many an occasion throughout my married life where I've needed to convince Mrs. Blinder that it's a good idea to do a particular thing or visit a particular place, but I have never, ever used photographs of space to help convince her to do anything. Let's talk about real life. Reasons outer space is fake. Gases fill their container. This is a real life thing. Real life physics. Gases fill their containers. You cannot have gases next to a vacuum without a container. That's how real life works. <laughs> really? Well, gases can definitely exist in space without a container, Hans. In fact, space is filled with gas, albeit very thinly spread out in most regions. This gas is part of what's known as the interstellar medium, the matter that exists in the space between stars and galaxies. It's mostly hydrogen and some helium, oh, and trace amounts of other elements as well. Also, Gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn are essentially huge balls of gas held together by their own gravity. How do you have a vacuum next to gas, but there's no container for it? Well, that's what outer space fantasy land is. That's what our atmosphere would be. Earth's gravity keeps our atmosphere from leaking out into space. Gravity pulls the gas molecules towards the Earth, preventing them from drifting off. But it's not a perfect seal. The very top layer of the atmosphere, called the exosphere, is where some of the lightest gas molecules like hydrogen and helium can reach speeds that allow them to escape Earth's gravity and drift off into space. But this process is very slow, so we don't lose our atmosphere quickly. Now, whenever a flat earther, and Hans is a flat earther, says that you can't have gas next to a vacuum without a container, what they actually mean to say is, physics hard, me no understand. So it must be fake. Gravity. I mean, gravity is just great. This is just a huge topic that not enough people talk about. Don't they? Or you must mean don't talk to flat earthers about it. Well, it's completely pointless, isn't it? Because whenever you bring up gravity, flat earthers just scream fake. I really despise it, and most of them are gatekeepers. That's why especially I despise it. Most of them are gatekeepers. People that are saying, oh, well, you know, NASA didn't... I mean, the worst, like the worst level are people that say they went to the moon, but they faked the tapes that they gave us. Now, I know I quite often say in my videos that I'm finding this all very confusing. And a lot of the time, I do get very confused by the things these flat earthers said. Take Hans here, for example. He's jumped from saying that people don't talk about gravity enough to saying that I'm completely lost. Oh, they faked the tapes, but they actually went there. Anybody who's not sane, the moon isn't even a place that you can land. The moon is a light in the sky. Right, I get it now, Hans. Isn't it funny how a flat earther needed to say something incredibly wrong in order for me to be able to follow along with his... Whatever this is. Gravity isn't even true. And it's the same thing with mocking flat earth. They mock the gravity thing. Oh, what, you don't believe in gravity? You don't believe in... You're a flat earther? You think the earth is flat? You don't believe in gravity? No, I don't believe in gravity. It's not a thing. It's not real. Now, flat earthers question or deny gravity because it contradicts their view of how the world works. In a flat earth world, there's no need for gravity as we understand it because the earth isn't a rotating globe held together by gravitational forces. But all this does is bring us back to the point I made earlier. If something's too hard to understand, it must be fake. Well, sorry, flat earthers, but that's just not how things work. The notion that mass attracts mass is not real. See the Cavendish experiment if you want to laugh. The Cavendish experiment you laugh at was conducted by Henry Cavendish in 1797 and 98 and aimed to measure the force of gravity between masses and calculate Earth's density. Using a torsion balance with small lead balls and larger stationary balls, <laughs> 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 
Cavendish observed the gravitational attraction causing the rod to twist. <laughs> Balls, rod, anyone else as childish as me? <laughs> anyway, this allowed him to calculate the gravitational constant. Some flat earthers refer to this experiment claiming it doesn't necessarily prove a spherical earth. But it wasn't trying to demonstrate the shape of the earth. The focus was on measuring the gravitational force, not directly demonstrating the Earth's shape. Here are just two classic examples that you can think of. You have an aircraft carrier. Okay, let's, let's imagine that you take an aircraft carrier, you lift it 50 feet off the ground, and you drop it. Or, you, I mean, you let go of it. You're no longer supporting it. It falls to the ground and it smashes. And what do people say? Oh, wow, gravity. Gravity really screwed up that aircraft carrier when it smashed into the ground. Okay, now take this aircraft carrier and place it in water. Why aren't people talking about gravity anymore? Where's gravity? How come, how come it floats perfectly fine? Well, without gravity, it wouldn't float at all. Gravity and buoyancy work together to keep a boat afloat. Gravity pulls the boat downwards, while buoyancy is an upward force created when the boat displaces water and counters the pull of gravity. For a boat to float, the buoyant force pushing it up must be equal to the gravitational force pulling it down. But, and this balance is crucial, and it's why boats are designed to displace enough water to create the necessary buoyancy to counteract their weight. It's a perfect example of physics in action on the water. And. It's because gravity doesn't exist. People are just forgetting about, it's just density and buoyancy. I love it when flat earthers bring up density and buoyancy, which themselves depend on gravity to function. <laughs> the reason that, that the aircraft carrier falls to the ground, if you lift it 50 feet in the air and you don't support it, it's because it's more dense than the air around it. So of course, what, what else could possibly happen? It's more dense, so it's gonna go down. So the air below it, to the left of it, to the right of it, and of course the air above it. So, why is it that whenever we see an object fall, those objects always manage to fall downwards, as we would expect? Now if what a flat earther thinks causes objects to fall is real, how do those objects know which way to fall? Come on! How do they know? But then the second you place that aircraft carrier in water, now it's buoyant, and now it's not flying downwards anymore. So, once you've overcome the buoyant force, gravity is nowhere to be seen. There, there is no such thing as gravity, it's just buoyancy. Yeah, you said, and I also said that gravity is essential for buoyancy, but anyway, that's not the question I want to ask. So you want this ship to overcome the buoyant force acting upon it. You do realise what would happen if a ship was able to overcome the buoyant force acting upon it, and it was pretty straightforward, really. It would sink! Okay, just a balloon is another great example of there is no such thing as gravity. The only forces that we're seeing in these scenarios is density and buoyancy. When you have a balloon and it's not filled with helium, it goes to the ground. When you fill up that balloon with helium, the instant that the balloon is less buoyant than the air around it, it starts shooting up. Well, what happened to gravity? Gra if gravity is the thing that's pulling a balloon, the rubber balloon skin down, why do I only have to make the balloon less buoyant than air and all of a sudden it shoots up? Shouldn't I be having to overcome gravity? Shouldn't I have to put like a lot of helium into the balloon? A helium balloon floats because helium is lighter than air, making the balloon less dense than the surrounding atmosphere. The difference in density means that the buoyant force acting upon the balloon, you know, the force that pushes it upwards, is greater than the force of gravity pulling it down. It's simple hands. No because there's no such thing as gravity. You're not you're not overcoming gravity. You're making the balloon less buoyant than air and then it will go up. Uh, less buoyant? I think you'll find it's more buoyant, Hans. And the increased buoyancy is because helium is lighter and less dense than the air of our atmosphere. Let's talk about the stars. Stellar parallax does not exist. Go research negative parallax. Stellar parallax is a really cool concept in astronomy that helps us measure the distance to stars. 
So are you saying that measurements don't exist hands? And also it's worth pointing out that negative parallax, also known as cross-eyed parallax, is a term used primarily in the field of stereoscopy and 3D imaging. Now in astronomy, the term negative parallax isn't really used or relevant. Parallax in astronomy refers specifically to the apparent shift in the position of a star due to Earth's orbit around the sun. So what you really just said was stellar parallax doesn't exist. Go and research cheese and onion crisps. Just because the same word is used, it doesn't always mean that they're talking about the same thing, Hans. Isn't it magical that everything worked out so perfect in this random place where the sun is the exact same size as the moon? Really, Hans? Is that what you actually think? Now, when you do the math, which I didn't, by the way, I just looked it up. But if you do do the math, you'll find that it takes about 64.3 million moons to fill the sun's volume. And this gives you an idea of just how enormous the sun is compared to our moon. It's a staggering size difference, but nowhere near as staggering as what you just said. The sun and the moon are the same size really hands anyway that's enough hands worm hat for one day if you ask me thank you as always to my lovely patreons and channel members remember if you are able to help and you want to then all the ways in which you can do so are listed below this video in the description thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next one Oh, you're still here then. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something new. If you did, then you'll probably enjoy this video as well. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already and subscribe if you're new. And I will see you all again very soon or in a few minutes if you do decide to watch this recommended video. <laughs> Love you, bye.